So today is the 18th of September and I'm just getting ready here in the morning uh, to leave for work. For a long time I've been wanting to make a video showing uh, the commute that I ride to work every day. Um, so I've got my bike rigged up with some extra equipment today so I can do that. Um, so as you'll see, this is my new Contour Roam 2 camera which I have mounted there um, on the front and I've got a few of my uh, brake cables and shifter cables um, elastic banded and actually have a little clip on there uh, to hold those out of the way so it'll get a nice clear view um, of the road. Uh, I've also got my GPS on there uh, which is going to keep track of my distance and my speed and I also have it linked up uh, with the heart rate monitor uh, which I'm wearing right now um, and that is going to be able to tell you what my pulse is or my, my heart rate is uh, while I'm riding. Oh yeah, and I also have my earpiece uh, and microphone uh, hooked up to a, uh, a voice recorder, uh, which I have down here, and I uh, just have that so I can just kind of talk about my route um, as I'm riding it. Uh, when I ride to work, I typically carry a backpack with me um, inside of my handy dandy orange milk crate. Um, inside of there I just have, uh, well every day I bring back and forth with me a bunch of tools just in case, you know, something goes wrong and i got to fix something along the way. I've never used one yet in the five months that I've been doing this commute, but it's always good to, to have a backup plan in case something happens. Um, I also usually carry my lunch in there back and forth to work if I, if I make my lunch, um, as well as a bunch of clothes because as you can see right now, uh, I'm not wearing the kind of clothes that I wear in an office. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a, a shower at work that I can change into my clothes. I, you know, I, I get to work, I'm all you know, hot and sweaty from riding. Um, I just you know jump in the shower there, and then I just take my clothes out and you know get changed into those, and I'm ready for the work day. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna go outside and, and start filming this video. Alrighty, so I'm just leaving my building now. So as I was saying, this is a video that I've been wanting to record for quite a long time, but I've kind of just been wanting to make sure I can assemble everything and just kind of do things the way that I want to do them. Uh, you know, with the, the speed and the heart rate and the, the microphone for talking. I want to do all of those things. So we're just coming up to Young Street right here. I have to get across Young Street to get on the other street that I take most of the way to work. I'll cross at this traffic light right here, which is just turning green in my favor. Alrighty, here we go. So this morning it's fairly warm. Um, the last few days it's been really cold in the mornings, but today it's been not too bad really. Uh, it was about 15 Celsius I think when I left. So this is duplex, a street that I take, probably I'm on for about half of my ride. And just a residential street through a neighborhood. And I'll apologize for all the breathing I'm doing. Uh, for whatever reason, this microphone really picks up on all of the, you know, every breath I take gets amplified quite a bit. I definitely noticed, uh, like it's the third week of September now. I definitely noticed a very big difference between um, the last week of August and the first week of September. Um, all summer I had gotten used to this being a you know somewhat quiet street, uh, but as soon as school started up for the kids again I, after Labor Day, um, it seemed like the tra traffic on this road in the mornings at least and. Well, I think at night too, in the, in the afternoons, is about maybe triple what it was in the summer. Because so many parents are driving their kids to and from school. 
So I take a few little shortcuts while I'm riding. I ride on the sidewalk at times. One of the inconvenient things about this road is that, you know, every time there's an intersection, it's always a four-way stop, which you're supposed to, everyone is supposed to stop at. And the first person that got there is supposed to go first. But a lot of times when you're riding a bike, people just assume, you know, just kind of give the bike priority, even though the law states that, you know, a bike is considered the same as a car. A lot of people kind of just let you go when it's not your turn. But it's inconvenient because you have to, you know, you lose your speed every time you get to one. So you gotta, even if you don't have to stop, you end up slowing down quite a bit just to make sure you're safe. Uh, there's a traffic light here, which usually is green. It's not a very busy street going the other way. We're definitely on the busier one now. And I went a little bit earlier than the green light on that one because I could see there was nobody coming for a long way in each direction. So I ride my bike to work um, basically every single day. I think there have been two occasions when I didn't ride, I did it something else instead. Um, and they weren't because I wanted a break from it or anything, it was just because you know I needed to go somewhere after work or something and I wanted to take the subway instead. I'm very fortunate in where I live and where I work in that you know the biking distance to work is about a little bit under eight kilometers I think. Uh, we've done 1.6 or 1.8 so far. Um, uh, the distance is, is very bikeable, but it's also uh, very fast to do by public transit as well. The subway basically runs right by my apartment, and there's also a stop that goes right by my work too. So if I want to take the, the subway to work, um, it takes about the same amount of time as it does to bike. So I'm just getting to a street called Lawrence now, which is a much busier street and there's about six lanes of traffic to go through it so we're just waiting for those traffic lights to turn. I take off my outer layer because I've warmed up quite a bit. My glasses are now fogging up so I'll just wipe those off and there's my green light. So I realize this video I'm making here is probably not gonna appeal to everybody. It's, you know, a fairly long ride to work. It takes about half an hour. Um, but I definitely know that there's people subscribed to my channel that are uh, bike commuters and they're, you know, from all over the world. So I thought it'd be interesting for some of those people just to be able to see, um, you know, what a, a day in the life of CJ Hoyle is riding his bike to work. Uh, in the streets of Toronto, uh, really the north northern streets of Toronto. Uh, I don't work downtown. I work. I live in like I guess what you call North Toronto, and uh, where I go to work is called North York, just on the border of North York. And I kind of chose to live where I lived because it's about halfway between my work and downtown. So. It's easy to get to both by bike or by subway. So after we crossed Lawrence there, the street that I was on changed names from Duplex to now it's called Jedburg. But it, you know, they, they, the two streets line up perfectly and there's that traffic light in between, so it's really ideal for, 
for biking on. And as I said, it's even with the extra traffic that's come as a result of the school year starting, um, it's still quite safe, in my opinion, to ride on this road. Um, one day maybe I'll show what the route looks like if I ride along Young the whole way, but it's definitely faster because coming over here you have to, um, you know, you have to go a few extra blocks to the south or to the to the west, and then you have to come back east again to get back in line with where I'm going. Um, but uh, definitely safer. Although Young is probably actually faster for riding on because there aren't all these four-way stops. There's traffic lights, but usually you get the traffic lights in your favor, so it's not too bad. I don't usually do that route, but sometimes I'll take it just to get a little bit of a change of scenery. And Anyways, this tree here is called Deloraine, and it's where I turn right. So now we are turning from going north to going east. Now we're heading back towards Young Street. That's the street that you can see up ahead, all the cars on it. I'm hoping that the wind isn't too bad. As I said, today is a pretty warm day, so I thought it was kind of ideal to do. But when I look at the wind this morning, it said it was only like one kilometer an hour or something, which is quite low. So I'm hoping with a little wind sock that I have on my microphone here um, and the low amount of wind that you'll be able to hear me quite clearly. How's my heart rate doing here? 147. That's. I don't really know very much about heart rate if that's high or low. I think my my standard when I'm not like doing anything is about 100, so or a little bit less, maybe 90. My rest heart rate. So now we're just crossing Young Street at uh, this traffic light. I always wait for it to turn green so I can get across there. Um, and this part of the traffic light, um, it, all it is, all it is over here is just the Loblaws, the grocery store. Um, and it's pretty rare for people that are coming from from left of me to actually go straight through. So I can see that it's very clear right now, so I'm just gonna go through. And right now I'm riding on Young Street, but I'm just riding on the sidewalk because it's a very pretty busy road and I'm only gonna ride on it for a little stretch here. There's no driveways or anything, so it's pretty safe to ride on. And now we've got the fun part coming up. As you can see, there's a nice big hill up there ahead of me. But I'm not gonna ride along that, I'm gonna turn right here, which gets me onto a quieter little street. But this quieter street still has that same hill and it's a little bit more condensed, it's even steeper I think, so. The speed limit here is 30 kilometers an hour, so. Pretty hard to stay under that number. I always get a rush from that hill. It's always a nice little fun part to my ride. My I was noticing my earpiece was almost blowing off going down that. Um, so the area that we're in right now is called Hogs Hollow and there's a lot of very, very nice expensive houses. I think that the, I read somewhere that the houses here all range from like, I don't know, three million to like 10 million. They're, they're nice houses, but they're also really nice properties because it's well, it's, a, it's like a wooded, foresty kind of area with, you know, lots of hills and valleys and stuff. And, uh... It's just kind of secluded a little bit from the rest of Toronto. So as you could have guessed, after coming down that big hill, we've now got a big hill for us to climb back up of. Take a little sip of water before that. So 
and that's where you'll see my heart rate get really high. So it's basically the same hill that I just went down. Got to climb up it again. My breathing here will probably be pretty loud too. For a while I was having to do a little bit of a different route because that the street that I went down that was really steep, it had uh, construction there at the bottom. I don't know if you noticed the new pavement when we got to the bottom of the hill. But uh, for a while they were had that road all dug up so I had to find an alternate route. And really the only option was to ride on the sidewalk on Young further to the bottom of the hill. But this part of the route what I'm doing right now, I've been doing the whole time. All right, wasn't so bad. First time you do it, first actually probably 20 times you do it, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, is this ever gonna end? And I don't know that it gets any easier, but over time, you just start to think about other things and it just becomes part of the routine. And uh, my heart rate at 176. Yeah, I worked. I got my exercise for the day. It's the beauty of riding, riding a bike to work is that you know, a lot of people like drive to work and stuff. Then they get home and they have to, they have to exercise keep in good shape. So they end up driving to the gym and, you know, probably there for at least an hour. Eats up an hour of your day. Well, by biking to work, it takes me a half hour in the morning, half hour at night. In the end, I get an hour of exercise per day. That's maybe not the most intense or uh, the most, uh, you know, the most, the most amount of variance in the exercise, but it's something at least. If I wanted to, I could still probably make time for other kinds of exercise. So I'm just waiting across this road here. It's called York Mills. Um, so the area where I live is, is Eglinton Avenue. The next one that we cross is Lawrence Avenue. And the next subway stop, after, after Eglinton, Lawrence, there's this one which is called York Mills Avenue. So, our, so we're on York Mills Road. So we're just gonna wait to cross that. There's no traffic light here, so it's not... You have to wait a little while to actually cross. Sometimes when the traffic's really, really bad, um, I turn right here and I go up about maybe I don't know, 400 meters up the road and there's a traffic light there which I can take. Um, but as long as I'm patient, there's usually a, a good enough gap in here that I can safely get across. The sign officially, there's a sign straight ahead of me which you know says you're not supposed to go straight through, but that's, in my opinion, really intended for cars because if a car was waiting to go through here, then all the cars behind it would get stuck and it would just, you know, cause a big, a big problem because the car would block everybody else. But with the bike, cars, I'm leaving a nice big gap to my right where cars can get right through. Now this is taking longer than it normally does. I usually wait less than 30 seconds, but for whatever reason, the traffic lights just aren't really very synced today. So I'll just wait for my gap. I see my clearing, here we go. And we're across. So the street that I'm on now is called Old Young. And it's interesting, all the Young streets that there are because you know, there's, a, there's Young Street, which is you know the, one of the main streets of Toronto, uh, which is what I rode on for about a block near my house and about another block 
um, that near that Loblaws. Um, and the intersection that's right near the Loblaws is a street called Young Boulevard. So that's the intersection of Young and Young, Young Street and Young Boulevard. So there's two Young Streets that have already been passed today. And now I'm on one called Old Young Street, which is a third one. This is another just nice quiet neighborhood. It's, I think it's a lot of older families that live here. So there's no, you know, parents driving kids to school traffic that I had to get used to a few weeks ago. So my distance so far is about five and a half K. So we're getting pretty close now. And I just noticed my brakes are a little bit squeaky. Um, I definitely noticed it when I was coming down the big hill. Um, they seem to squeak almost no matter how I have them set on that hill just because it is such a such a big, such a big uh, slowdown at the bottom. Um, yeah, it's really unfortunate that uh, there's a stop sign there. It'd be really nice to, you know, carry that momentum across the flat of the bottom of the hill and help me get back up the other side. But unfortunately, it's the intersection and they have to put a stop sign there. Um, but yeah, my brakes have been making a little bit of a, a squeaking noise, which I got. I guess a little, a little bit of an adjustment to those. Um, they still work really effectively, just annoying mostly. Um, but you might also notice there's a bit of a squawking sound coming from my bottom bracket as I'm riding. Um, that's been a real frustration for me. I've taken it apart and rebuilt it multiple times uh, using the procedure that I have posted on YouTube. Um, but I think that the actual bottom bracket spindle is bent so uh, I gotta find a replacement one for that uh, so we just turned onto this little street here I don't remember the name of this one but it's not a very major street uh, now we're heading back to the west a little bit but we're gonna turn right here because this is where the 401 is the 401 is the busiest well, the busiest highway in Canada or one of the biggest highways in Canada for sure and uh, Luckily, I don't have to actually ride on it. You're not allowed to ride on it with a bike. Um, but they made this nice little uh, biking slash walking path, which goes underneath the 401. So, right now we're underneath the 401. You always see lots of other people walking and walking to work and riding their bikes along here. It's a nice little stretch. This is the part of the ride where I use my bell. The only time where I have to ring my bell. A lot of times people people are you know stay clear of the way, but it's nice for them to know that you're coming at least, so you're not they're not going to get startled by a bike that goes whizzing past them. So the rollerblader. Okay. So now we're just getting out of the 401 area, and we're going to go through this little neighborhood here, which is uh, just a street mostly with big condominiums on it. So, it's a fairly quiet street. By taking all these little detours off of Young Street, it makes the distance further, but it makes the ride a whole lot safer and quieter and just a lot more enjoyable, less stressful. 
sure it takes longer, but not an awful lot longer. And there's a condominium right straight ahead that they've been building. It doesn't seem to be getting any taller. It's kind of looked the same for quite a while. On this little stretch of road, I'm always going past all sorts of enormous pieces of construction equipment. But often they have these flag men here, which are there to keep us safe. Alrighty, so after that, we're in a little, I guess it's a bit of the same neighborhood, but this part of the neighborhood is still houses. It hasn't been converted to condominiums or not yet at least. Who knows what what's to come from now. But uh, we're very close to work. Uh, my distance is 7K now, so less than a kilometer to go now. And these streets are always very quiet. Only a car every now and then. So now we're heading east again for a little bit of a stretch. It's really just to get to a traffic light that's convenient for crossing uh, Shepherd Avenue, which is where my office is. So turn left here. And you can see my heart rate has dropped from when I did the hell, it's now sitting around 146. And this is the traffic light where I cross Shepherd each and every day. So we'll just turn here and press the button to get across. Now I'll just loop back around. Something they have at almost every traffic light in Toronto is a, a crosswalk that counts down uh, from you know nine or ten or fifteen or whatever it counts down from, uh, telling you how long it's going to be um, before you know your your time to cross is over or how long it's going to be before the light changes. So that's handy. So now there's a little stretch along Shepherd Avenue where I ride my bike, and we're basically at the office now. So. Uh, what happens from here is I lock my bike up and then I go inside and have my little shower and uh, put on my clothes and then, and then it's time to start work. So anyways, that pretty much concludes this video showing my commute to work. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it interesting. Thanks for watching.